pizza wherever you want, cooked in just 60 seconds, I wouldn't believe me either. Hey everybody, Thursday, guess what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna do a paint along. <laughs> hey everybody, uh, thanks for coming by. I gotta say, holy smokes, you guys are doing amazing. The waterfalls that you guys did last week, I'm just super impressed with. Um, uh, really lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Um, keep it coming. Boy, I just, um, it makes a teacher proud when I see something like that. It was awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, keep those good, keep those things going up. And tell your friends, please tell anybody you know that's an artist that um, wants to come by and um, do the paint alongs with us. Uh, they're a lot of fun, and I love seeing what you guys do with them. And so this week, of course, in my newsletter, I did have a video on waves. And so this week, this Thursday, we're doing waves. We're going to be doing a bunch of waves. And here's the one I did this afternoon. Um, I already did one. And so this is the one we're doing. And yes, there's no big frog in the picture. Here, the big, there's a big, big frog there. Um, we changed that, then we changed the fly that was right here, and so that's all. That's all gone. We're gonna um, do it. Uh, I'm probably gonna do it in the same colors. I'm probably gonna do a blue sky and not an overcast. So we'll go into that in a little bit. But first off, welcome, uh, welcome again. And for all you newcomers, please find everything you need here on my website uh, at beckerart.net. Anything you need there from me is all. It's all there when my classes are, when my workshops are at, and this is what we're painting. Always, this is what we're painting um, in the front. And these are last two weeks. This is the week, this two weeks ago. This is last week's, the waterfall, which you guys, again, unbelievable. You guys are doing great, great, great. And um, so let's see. And also the supplies I'm using, and today I am using a little bit of masking fluid. And so we're doing the Holbein watercolors, which I use, and the brushes are my brushes, the Holbein brushes with my name on them. And we are using Stonehenge Aqua again today. All right, and so let's go right to tabletop and get going. Oh wait, first we got a toast. <laughs> today we have a Belgian beer. So we have a Belgian beer, um, St. Bernardus. <laughs> St. Bernardus, <laughs> a triple F from Belgium. So we're gonna see what that's like and I open it because uh, the ones I don't have it open for, it doesn't twist off. <laughs> so cheers everybody, cheers for another Thursday night, <laughs> Thursday night paint along. Oh, it <laughs> flew over. Um, a very good beer. That's probably a number nine paintbrush beer. Very good. All right, so let's go to the table topping. Oh, wait, first we got to go to our value study. So our value study, and yes, here's the frog. <laughs> uh, everybody sees the frog. No, this is the big frog with his mouth, and look at the fly he's trying to catch right there. Yes, we are not going to make it that. <laughs> uh, I saw that right away. Actually, I thought it was a big... Um, whale coming out of the sand and gonna try to go into the ocean but um we're gonna change that around you know stuff like that you have to change around as the artist and so and also we don't we only have basically one wave right here and what i want to do is i want to make more than just one wave and you'll see in the picture that i did before that i want to have like this wave this way this one's going to move up a little bit and make that a little bit bigger a wave and I'm not going to make so much of the froth inside the water. I'm going to make it more like transparent water and just some little waves in there. And I'll show you how to do that. And also we have the wetness over here. Um, that's a wet, anything that's wet reflects like it's like a lake, basically like a sidewalk. It's a wet surface and the sand can be a wet surface too. And the wash, the water goes back into the thing, into the ocean. And so we're going to make that a reflection right here. We're not going to make this as dark as this, but my darks are very simple. It's a very simple composition. You get the lights that are always, you know, the water and the sky are pretty much our lights. And then the darks are the, underneath the waves, the frog, <laughs> the frog rocks. <laughs> and there are some rocks back here, which I put into it. I don't know if you can tell that, but we're going to do that. And then these trees are going to be a dark, our dark. This is our dark area. And we'll put a little bit of dark down here. And basically, so it's kind of like a, a sea uh, going around the darks in there. I see. Get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so here we go. Let's go to the tabletop and get started here. We only got an hour. And so, and again, for the newcomers, please ask away. I have you up on the side here of the chatting. So if you have a question, just put it into the chat and I will look at it and hopefully be able to answer it. And welcome everybody. So far, we, uh, it looks like we have Mary and we have, oh yeah, Michelle. Uh, let me see. Sue, Dippy. Dippy dies. Hey, how's it, how's it going? Mark, Barbara. We got uh, Lee, Mary, Marianne, and I'm sure there's more coming. And um, 
So uh, let's get going here, guys. Again, ask questions. Ask questions. We love the questions because I'm sure you want everyone wants to answer, and I answer them live, right? I don't, I don't type them in. Actually, I can't because something's going on with my um, with my YouTube videos. I cannot play the video. I can just see the chat. And so, hey, Pamela from Wheaton. All right, so let's get going. So here is what we did this afternoon. And if you look at the picture, see how I made a few more waves in here. I did this wave. This is the front. And if you see, this is this is all in the picture up here, up here, this picture. If you look, there's only one big long wave in here that's all frothy. And instead of doing that, you can do that. I mean, it's all a lot of whites in there and stuff. It's all a little, you know, you can do that if you like. like. But I kind of took it and made it more like see-through water. And I made a little bit of a wave right there where it stops and a little bit of, and again, uh, for anybody who has watched my video this week for my newsletter, let me just show you really quickly what I did. And um, just very fast, that when, when you do a wave, basically um, from the side, if you have a waves, the sun's over here and behind, and we're, we're looking this way, our eyes right here, we're looking this way towards the sun, so we're seeing this part is the dark. This is the dark side because it's away from the sun. And then the top glistens where the sun is if we're seeing looking into the sun, and I did put the sun in right there, see? And I'm gonna put the sparkles into the water, which I didn't do mascoid this time, and so this time I realized that I need to put mascoid in there because I want it white. That's gonna be the lightest light in my in my image. And if you look at the photograph up here, I made it so that the white glistens, and really in the photograph, I did that with Photoshop. The sun was not in the scene, but to make it more interesting, I put the sun smack in the middle. I guess some people say that's not a good thing to do, put it right smack in the middle, but hey, it's okay because it's kind of, it's balanced. I think everything's balanced. I did put some rocks over here. If you can see that, I put some rocks over here and so then it'll kind of balance it up enough. And so by having all my center of interest in this area, that's where I want it anyways. So, and that's what I did here. Center of interest is right in this area and it worked out pretty well. And as you can see, I used like a sand color over here, which is an orange and a little bit of violet in there. And then you can see I went through and I did reflections of the rocks in the water. And the sky is so important. Let me tell you, that's it's very important to get a really fun sky. Everybody got a great sky in class this afternoon. And so I'm expecting you guys to do the same. And after looking at all the waterfalls you guys did this week, holy smokes. Unbelievable job, guys. I really uh, I am so impressed with your waterfalls. That's a hard thing to do. People don't realize how hard those waterfalls were. But um, you guys did a great job. Super, super great. So anyways, let's get going here. And so then again, uh, dark side. And if the, if the wave is coming from the side, you can see if it goes over and it crests like this, the wave, when it kind of crests over, this becomes all the little frothy stuff. And that's always just white. You just make that white. Anything that's um, part of the the splashiness of it or when it crests over and movement and you're getting frothy uh, water, that means just make it white. I learned that from Disney animated films. Just check out a Disney animated film, Bambi or any one of those that has um, running water in it, Pocahontas. Um, you can look and see how they did their their water. And a lot of times anything that's like splashing or frothy or bubbly, that's just white. Just make that white. Or lines that are in the water that are white or that are like you see in this picture right here, all the white. That's just um, moving water. And then if you see it the other way, it's like a piece of glass. So you can see through it or you see like a mirror image because of the mirror image of the water mirroring up what's above in the sky. So, and so let's get going. And, um, and if you have questions again, <laughs> let me know. All right. So here we go. I'm going to start with the background and I'm going to wet the surface. And I did put mascoid right here and I put little dots over here. You can see closer up. See, I put mascoid there. Mascoid is I used, um, Holbein has some great masking fluid. Um, comes in a bottle, it's nice and thin, and um, don't use a regular brush, use like one of these rubber brushes or one of those um, liner brushes, liner, um, a liner things, I don't have one with me right at the moment, but you, um, yeah, so just don't use a brush, a really good brush, and I don't like using soap because I think that dilutes it, you know, I know there's a lot of people that use soap and they go ahead and do it, and that's fine, I just feel it kind of dilutes it and makes it um, not work so well. I know it makes your brush better, but don't use a brush. <laughs> to me, that's an easier point. All right, we got a newcomer. Thanks for coming. Maybe a Barbara, hello, Barbara. Hello, Mich uh, 
hello, David. Uh, did, okay, <laughs> let's keep going here. I can say hello forever, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna go here and just um, wet this, wet the sky, wet, wet it first. And I just noticed that um, I, some of this um, is pretty dark, and see how it kind of came into there. I don't know if you can see that, but what I do is I take a needle rubber eraser, and this is still not wet, so I'm gonna roll my needle rubber eraser across it to get away the graphite. Uh, leaving the line but get rid of the graphite so the graphite doesn't get into the sky so you do that with a needed rubber eraser you just roll it on top of it like a rolling pin so when i wet it of course it's like it's like a pigment right and so it'd be a brown gray pigment so in that photograph it's an overcast you know isn't it funny that this is an overcast but i'm not gonna make an overcast because i don't want an overcast sky if you want to make an overcast rainy sky that is fine yes do that i'm just gonna make it a blue sky with a, a lot of clouds, a lot of white clouds, but you decide what you want. It just has to be light. It can't be too dark because that's not that's not my dark part of my painting of my composition. The dark is the trees, on the rocks, and underneath the wait. That's it. You know, I got remember that value study, that value pattern. And so I'm gonna use my smaller round brush to then draw, draw in here, and start out with my lightest lights. And so I do need a color over the sun because. I need it to pop out, and so I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, a, maybe a grayish blue, and this is horizon blue with lavender. I'm going to take that right across the sun, and I'm kind of just, this is all wet, so you can get soft edges, remember? Float your pigment and get some soft edges. And as you go into the distance back here, it's going to be a little bit lighter, and there can be clouds back there, and I can make it grayer as things go back, and so how do you gray something? You take its complement. So purple, what's complement of purple? Yellow. So take a little bit of yellow and the purple, and you'll make it. Um, I used yellow and the, um, the purple. It's kind of greenish because this purple has a little bit more blue in it, maybe. And so uh, let's see. No, that's pretty gray. That's cool. And so I'm gonna go in here and just have fun with the sky. Everybody had fun with the sky today. Just let things drip and let it be. You know, let it be fun. You can do, um, and then I'm gonna go up here and I take some ultramarine blue and I put it a little bit thicker in there and let's just make a nice blue Greek island sun. Maybe this is the Greek islands <laughs> with palms. They don't have any palms, I don't think, when I was in the Greek islands. They have some, but not like this. This is more Caribbean looking. And so let's go with some more, a little horizon blue, a little bit of this, a little bit darker. I'm gonna spray it with my little spray bottle of mister and let it drip a little bit. So I'm gonna hold it up a little bit let it come down and let just let it come down here and let's see I'm gonna let it drip a little bit and make it fun now if I put too much water it's gonna drip out too much and you're not gonna get those little fingers if you just do a little bit and then put a little bit more pigment in there you're gonna get those little fingers that I love so much the little lines you know isn't that great looking looks like maybe a little storm coming there and you know, a little tropical shower there and so um, have fun with the sky. Again, I'm not even, I do like this little bit of right there and the, the upper part right here, this area, they got a little dark. Let's put a little dark right there. Let me put that in there. And see, it's all gonna be soft edge because it's all wet. Now, if I have any dry areas in here, you know, then I have to watch it because I'm gonna get a hard edge. So I don't want too many hard edges. See, like that's, that's dry, so I got a hard edge. See that? So you gotta watch that. And um, you can take things out to, let's say you wanna take, let's say that was too much blue. Rinse your brush, take it out. And for all you newcomers, I use a towel on my surface so I can just dab down anywhere I want instead of using up so much paper towel. And so here we go. And then we kind of go in here. This is gonna be darker so I can go right into that. So I can put right that in, right into the right into the water. Just use a little bit of pure lavender through here. Maybe a little bit darker, maybe some Prussian up here. Maybe really make it a, a Greek island sky. Look at that, nice, really blue. It's gonna dry 20% lighter. It always does. So if you're if you if you like what you see when it's wet, it's wrong because it's not gonna be that way when it dries. Once that once that water goes and evaporates, you're gonna get whatever you have left of pigment. So it's, it makes it about 20% lighter than what you have. So pretty much, I use two different, three different kinds of blues. I probably should put a little bit of orange up there just to maybe just in the background, maybe a little bit of orange to dull things down a little bit gray things up a little bit maybe right around here maybe going right through the sky through the sun and um, i do have to have a little bit of color there because i want that to be white i want that to be the whitest white i want that to be the only part that is going to be so white then it'll make everything else glow right 
Look at these little nice beautiful lines I'm getting there. Isn't that great? So yeah, let's move that around up a little bit because I see there's a watermark about to happen there because there's too much water in one spot. And so I'm just making it even, evening out the lights and darks of, or the, the amount of pigment that's in there and the amount of water. Because if there's a little bit more, much more water than pigment, it's going to, um, you need to stop that little dam with, with pigment. Not with more water, with more pigment. Just put it in there and stop the water from bleeding. All right, so I think that's pretty much, I'm going to do a little spattering. Oh, you know how much I love that, guys. And so I'm going to spatter a little bit in there, getting some little bit of, oh, I mean, that's a little bit too small a spatter. I want a bigger spatter. A little bit of, maybe that's birds now. Yeah, that's birds. <laughs> so we have little birds playing through here. <laughs> Somebody said they did a painting like this uh, um, and put a pelican like flying through. Um, that's cool. You know, do whatever you want. I mean, once you got the pattern and, you know, other things, people can be on the beach walking if you want or sitting on the rocks. That's fine, too. All right, so there's the sky, guys. Um, I think that's going to be about it for the sky. This should be a little bit darker, maybe just a little bit darker. And I did wet it again, so maybe just a little bit darker there. Just, it shouldn't be too dark, but again, it's going to dry 20% lighter. So we're good. We're good. Spray it a little bit, so it seems like it's a little bit uneven wetness. I want to even it out the wetness. All right, is my chat working? Anybody got some questions here? Let me just look over here for a second. Uh, no, no, no questions. So get this to me as soon as you can, guys. All right, so now let's go right into our, our water. And so remember, the sun is there looking at you. Know where your light is at all times. If you know where it's right there, it's looking straight at us. Here, like, right at us <laughs> so and um so what we're gonna do is the side that's away that's gonna be the light side the top is like a middle tone and the side away from it and if it's like a hill that they're like little mountains basically they're like little mountains let me show you again uh, what was that piece of paper so like little mountains here see and so if you're doing like a mountain this side is the dark side and so the side that you're seeing straight on the side you're straight on like that that's the part that's dark and I don't care how small that is you're gonna still make the those um, dark on one side middle and the, and the rest of it that's flat and then the other side is gonna be the lights it's gonna reflect the lights and that's what this maskoid there is for because I mean I'm gonna do what I didn't do this afternoon was take a dry brush take um, water the color of the water and since this is an ocean and the sand is pretty much like um, white to you know beige and that mixed with blue makes it turquoise and you're gonna get like a turquoise look and so what i'm gonna do is take turquoise so add a little bit of yellow to your light blue and you can get a nice tur little turquoise get a little see that nice and greenish a little bit of yellow into the blue and you get kind of a nice turquoise color turquoisey color and i'm just going to take it this is paper's dry and i'm going to take it right next to that i'm just going to whisk the top of it picking up the texture of the paper so it looks very textured and then I also have the um, masking fluid down, so it's gonna look like it's really shiny right there. More than this did, because this one I had to put white in afterwards. I had to put white in. And white, using white on top of watercolor paper doesn't make it white as the paper. It just cannot do that. It can't be as light as the paper. So you can see the moon is white of the paper. You can see the paint is not as white. And so I want the sparkles to be just as light as the sun because basically what's happening is the sun is reflecting into those little spots, those little waves, and they're blinding you in your eye. And so I can't get that effect if you're using white paint. That's how come I, this time, this time around, I used masking fluid and made little dots there because I know it'll be the white of paper now. And then this other part is just the texture, which will make it look like it's also the white of the paper. All right, so that's right down here. I'm making it so there's gonna be a light straight down right there. Hey, Carol. Hey, Sandra. Hey, Rose. All right, so now we're gonna go. Well, funny thing is, is that the sky gets darker and more vibrant and as it comes over your, over your head and as it goes up here and it comes over your head, but as it goes back, but the ocean, I don't know, I, I think it's because of the depth of the water it gets darker as it goes back and lighter as it comes forward. I always thought that was weird and I always thought I was wrong about that. But the more and more I studied um, water in the ocean and even like big, huge lakes like Lake Michigan um, and Lake Superior, it's because I think it's because of the depth of the water that 
the, it gets darker on the way back. And so I can't do anything right here right now, right to the edge, because that's still wet right there. So I'm going to take a little piece of paper towel, dry that a little bit right there. And then, um, and I also, um, last week I showed you an airbrush. Now I got a new one that's wireless and tubeless. And so this thing is awesome. Unbelievable what I can do with this thing. I just showed the class this afternoon. The other one I had had all the wires and the tubes and it's all messy. And uh, this thing is so nice. It's going to be great for plain air painting and you want something smooth. And, and um, the button to turn it on is right here and you can charge it with USB charger. And I put it in my last two videos that I put out there. So if you look at my newsletter and the video of um, uh, I have it in those. And it's just from Amazon. It's a super wonderful thing. You just press it right here. It turns on. It's really nice and quiet, and it works wonderfully. I'll, I'll use it again a little bit later just to show you. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it dark to light. And so I'm going to start out with a more of a darker blue. And I'm going to use the color that I just used up here. Don't change your colors because that's what is reflecting. The, the, the water itself doesn't have color. It's usually really you know transparent and clear. So I use the same color I used above, and it's just reflecting like a mirror into the water. I'm going to go right across the rocks because the rocks are darker than the water, right? This line back here has to be horizontal, ex I mean, perfectly example. Even if you got to measure from here to here and here to here, make that line perfectly horizontal across and level. Because if it's on an angle, your picture will never hang right on the wall. It it'll always look like it's off a little bit. I'll put a little bit of dark, dark right here. Okay, that was still wet. And so I'm just... All right, so then you go down. And anytime you see the top of the wave... Or you see where it's cresting over and you're drawing that, you go around that. You could maskoid that out too. I don't mind you doing that. If you want to maskoid it, you feel like it's easier for you to mask out, mask out that area, then do it. You know, you got to keep that white. You got to keep the paper white. And that, and later on, we will go back in and and um, do some shadowing of that. And so now I got to put a little bit more green in this blue. And so that means put a little bit of orange or orange yellow, I should say. Or you can buy turquoise, the color turquoise. You can actually buy that color. But um, actually, this is a green, a little turquoise. It's like composed green, not compost. I, <laughs> I used to call it compost. It's composed green and and the horizon blue makes a pretty nice um, aqua color, turquoise color with a little bit of green in, in the water. And as I get to this part here, I'm just going to kind of like do this type of thing where it's already going to has the um, dry brush in it. And so I'm just going to kind of go in here and underneath the wave, remember underneath that wave is going to be a little bit darker and to dull down your blue. If you don't want it too vibrant, then take a little bit of the orange because blue and orange are complements and then just take that right underneath there and make a little soft edge. Mix out my brush, pick up my turquoise blue again, go above to the next um, wave the next wave and the top of the wave is going to be white and so see how I have it drawn out and then go right underneath now this will be the dark again but first I put the light and that's the top of that wave and so you just keep those white keep them white they'll look automatically like a wave instantly you don't have to like paint the wave this is negative painting I know a lot of beginners have a hard time with negative painting but you keep your brush away from that area that's the white like I said you could put masking fluid there and that'd be fine um, but, um, and so I'm going to go here and see how nice and turquoise that is. And as it goes down, that's flat. So that's the middle tone right underneath the, right underneath the white where the, um, that's the dark part, right? And I remember what I said in that picture before that uh, right underneath the wave or right underneath the white is where the dark part is because it's away from the sun and it's blocking it. Now, sometimes right on the edge, it can get really light there because, um, it's really thin and it's, it's really clean water. So then the transparency goes right through. You can see the lights coming right through the water. And so then you look at your picture and see what your picture shows. And if your picture has some of that in there, then that's great. Do it. And so now underneath, this is another wave. I'm just going to put this here. I didn't get dark enough with it right away. You can go back in later too and get the really nice darks underneath the waves and even make it more and more. I like to get a little bit of soft edges there though. So I'm going to try to get some of it right away. Some of the dark, dark blue right underneath the wave. And it's almost like a shadow in a wave too. And then another wave right here. I'm starting out with the dark. Let's see how it goes from a dark, light, white. Dark, light, white. Three values. And then when you get up to here, when you get up to the front here, this is going to be sand. So you're going to be able to see through the water. So you're going to have to pick up a lot more of the sand color and mix it in with your turquoise color. 
and um, I should be doing that right here. And then it kind of rolls in, you know, at the very end, see these little lines right here? This little line right there, the pencil line, that will be a dark, and it's actually right where it's at. And it kind of rolls in, it's gonna give a little bit of white edge, because at the end of a lot of times of the water, as you can see in my photograph above, the very tip of the where the water is kind of stopping at right here, it's gonna be a little white edge, like it's like churned up water. And then it'll run back, but there's still be a little bit of an edge there of dark. A little bit of dark in that. So the pencil line is almost a dark. So you can just kind of keep it the pencil line in a way. And so now I've got to come in and just get my um, orange. And so I'm going to use more of a red orange. This red orange here. And then a little bit of, um, actually, no, let's use the yellow orange. I think the yellow orange is actually a little bit better. This is the yellow orange. You can use yellow and a little bit of red to make your certain kind of color for your sand. And that's not the color I want to use because it's way too vibrant. You know, I don't want it that vibrant. I, actually, I think even in the photograph up here, it just looks too, to me, that's too yellow. You know, that's kind of an ugly color. Um, and maybe it was that way, but I'm going to make it more of a, um, I'm going to put a little bit of lavender or lavender into that and it'll dull down the yellow. Yellow and lavender are compliments, so it'll dull it down a little bit. And see, I get more of a of a yellow ochre. If you have yellow ochre, you can just use yellow ochre too. And so I'm going in here, and I'm going to separate the dry sand from the wet sand. And so here, right, first off, I did the wet sand or the dry sand, and that will not have reflections in it. And so I'm going to do this edge pretty nicely because I'm going to go really close to the edge to keep a white edge on there. And same thing here, I'm going to keep a white edge, and you'll see what I what I'm doing in a second. So I'm gonna again get some of the yellow, yellow, a little bit of violet. And then go in here and maybe spatter a little bit. Let it let it be. If you can get um, granulation happening in the sand, ooh, do that. If you can get granulation, they, they even make granulation formula that you can put into watercolor. But granulation is when you can see the pigment moving around in there. And so if you can get that, do that. Get some granulation happening in there. Granulation is a fun thing to get. It's just pigment floating up there, and um, certain certain colors granulate more. Like ultramarine blue is a pretty color that granulates really well and then this will also look like it's more of a um, texture beach and a lot of times if you do that spattering cover up your uh, top part so you don't get like a little bunch of birds that you're gonna put up there because of all the yellow you put down here that's almost too yellow and I put a little bit more lavender in there that's just a little bit too bright for me so I'm putting a little bit of lavender over that just using my piece of paper like a um, blotter like a palette because you can do that, mix it right on the paper, just put it right in there, see? Just let it, because it's wet. Remember what did I say about floating your pigment? You can always float your pigment. Love floating my pigment. And so now down here, this is going to be the reflection sand. So we're going to go the same color. I'm going to start out and leave myself a little bit white edge right before here, so nothing will, nothing will touch. I'm just going to go right close by here. Just going to make that really close. Now this is, I'm starting out with the orange, but then I'm going to add the blue into this part and let them mix themselves together. Because here's my blue. I already have it. I had mixed it before, right? So you just use it. And then I'm going to go right up to the edge right here. because That's the dark part, right? Right here is going to be a little bit darker, right where the edge is. And then you're going to take and just bleed that blue into the orange that you have there. Just kind of go back in here. And you can mix them both, let them mix themselves together. They can mix themselves together without you even doing anything. You just kind of Bring them both there, and they're just going to combine, and they're going to be a nice, nice color. A lot of people make, think this makes mud. No, it makes it gray. You want a gray. It's fine. It's going to blend itself together. See how I didn't mush anything together right there? I just let them kind of come together because the water does that. You got to let the water do that. And see this little white line there now? I left that. That's the edge of the, of the water. And so then um, this, we can have a little bit of the yellow in here too, leaving that little white line on the edge. So that's foam. Remember, that's a little bit of foam right there. And I forgot to leave that light. Ah, I keep on forgetting that because this is the sun bleeding down here. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit of that water and make it light. I don't know how many of you are using towels, but the towel is the best thing I've ever invented. I think mean, that's the best thing. Work on, work on a towel. Make your whole tabletop a towel. You can just rub anywhere. Look at this. Isn't that great? Uh, I didn't um, wet the paper. I got a uh, question. Um, did you wet the paper before painting the sand? No, I call that wetting as I go along. And so it is wet at, at a certain point, but I didn't. I needed that dry edge right here, the hard edge. So I needed it dry. So I just wet as I went along. 
So I use one color, I put it down, and I've just floated other colors in there. And so I can do the same thing here. I can just float. Actually, what I want to do right here right now is make this um, the since this is a wet this is wet sand, and so it will reflect it will reflect these rocks into the um, into the wet sand here. So knowing that the rocks are going to be dark, I'm going to take a dark color here. I'm going to take a little bit of violet, a little bit more violet, lavender, and um, a little bit of orange that I had here. Mix them both together, lavender. And I'm just going to go in here and make my, let me take my flat brush because I'm going to pull it down, just straight down. Make it a little bit thicker, not too watery. Take the water out of my brush. I'm just going to pull this straight down and it's going to look like the reflection of this rock into the wet sand. There's going to be no, it's not like a mirror where it takes it and gives the exact shape like in the morning. I'm just taking that wet in the wet and pulling a nice thick amount of pigment into that. And I'm pulling it down and just letting it bleed on its own. And this is, this is the reflections into the wet sand. Now there's going to be some movement in this water maybe here and there. And so what you have to do there is um, take and take your brush, wipe it all off, clean it out, and make it dry, and then pull out like a wave. So just pull out a little bit of the wave, because there's a wave right here. See this line right there? That's a wave, and so here's another wave, and so that's going to be white, right? Because that's the wave on top of it. And so that's moving water, and so the same thing here. I'm just going to take a little bit out of there, and the reflection in the sand is already behind where the water is on top of. It's kind of a tricky thing to think, but just if you're ever at the beach, study things like this. I mean, that's what I did when I was down in Florida this, this year. I actually took a sketch pad out and I, my camera I had, and I just was studying things, just looking at how things work when they're wet, what they reflect. And a lot of things reflect the same. Like this is like a sidewalk. It could be like a sidewalk, same thing. You don't take the color of the actual object. Like a uh, sidewalk is basically gray, right? And so you just kind of make make things gray or whatever color the sky is reflecting into the water. Here, of course, the sand is a little bit of beige, so. All right, so there's a reflection of that rock that's gonna be in there. And I'm gonna put more in there later on too. All right, so that's pretty much what we got for the water and for the, um, for the sand. Now let's go into our darks and parts that are dry. And is this dry yet? Yeah, we can go right into our trees. Now, normally I would go work from back to front and I would, I still have to go in here, get this parts a little bit um, lighter beige or gray. Um, Cause even the white has fluff in it. And so it's gonna be like a little gray in there. So we're gonna um, do that later when it's um, just not totally, totally dry yet. So let's go right into our trees. And so we're gonna go right into here. And the most important part, part about these trees or the rock is the outer shape of that. And of course, yes, the, the color inside is all important but the outer shape of that um, tree. But first I gotta get the bigger dark. So let's go in here. I'm gonna take my smaller round brush and I'm taking a little bit of violet here. Uh, let's start with our rocks. You know what, let's start with our rocks. That way they're pretty big too. And so let's go and I didn't wet it first. I'm wetting as I go along, like somebody had asked. Um, so I'm just gonna wet with any color in my brush and the top of a rock, let me just show you real quickly what I'm talking about when you're doing the top of a rock. When you do a top of a rock and then you go to the next one, I want this layered. I want a couple of layers of rocks. So let's say I'm doing a rock right here and then I go and I come up to the next rock right here. Oops. I shouldn't put that into a wet surface. And then, <laughs> so then the next rock will be, this is the top of the next rock, right? And so then you leave a little bit of white edge there. That's the top of the rock and this is the side of the rock. Maybe there's another rock right here. I'm just really quickly just explaining to you how the rocks like doing negative painting of the rocks. And then maybe this rock has a little bit right here. Keep the top of that rock. Maybe this is another rock right there. So just keep on getting darker right, right next to the top of that rock. And then this has the side of this rock. And so basically when you're doing these rocks, right the edge of this, the bottom of this rock is the top of this rock. And I keep that white at first. Now somebody in my class asked me, well, what, how come this one can't be white? Well, it depends on what your background is. Like this background's light, so I can't make it white. Otherwise, whoops, <laughs> there's a bird. Otherwise, I, otherwise it will not show. And so what I can do is when I get this done, like as soon as I put this dark right here and I go around these rocks like this, I can then, I can then, when I make these rocks down here and leave a little bit of white showing, I can then make these that color when I, as, as I'm putting more darks into this area. I'll show you in a second. Hold on one second. So there's my first wash in there. I don't have to worry about the wash 
uh, being that color, of course, I always start with that, with anything, and then I, I put darker colors in there, and I shape the rock because I work wet into wet. And I'll put a little blue in there, and I'll put all kinds of colors in there. And I actually want that to be warm because it is. I'm using a lot of blue, and so I want to have some orange in there. So which is, when I add this color to the purple, it makes it kind of brownish. So, and I, or use a brown. That's fine, too. You know, um, orange and blue make brown, so that's fine to do that. So I'm just going to put nice and colors in there. So you see how the top is a little bit darker or a little bit lighter right now. So then later on, I can make that when I get this done, I can make those down here the same color as that, but not until later until, because right now it would bleed in there and I can't do it right now. And so here I'm putting a little bit of orange in there, leaving the top of those rocks light and the side dark and the crevices will be really dark, even darker than there. And away from the sun, this side of the rock is going to be a little bit darker. This has to be a little lighter. And you can even put lighter colors in there too. Just let them bleed and float and do all that kind of stuff. As long as they're the darkest part, because they're darker than the rest of the, this is part of my dark part of my scheme, right? And, um, and there's a little rack right here. See how I kind of dip into all the colors? I don't pick a particular one color for the rocks. I, I pick up a bunch of the colors that are in the warm field, but then I use the colors that I used before around, you know, like this, I can have a little bit blue in there. Because overall, it will it will feel brown and it will feel dark, um, so that's a way of making it just more a little bit more colorful. Now the reflections will be a little bit darker, but not yet. I have to wait for that because I can see a little bit in there, but I'm kind of have to make them a little bit darker. A couple of little rocks over here, and they can be dark, all just dark like that. And then of course I never leave it alone. I always. Dump another little color in there and just let it bleed a little bit here and there. Maybe a couple of little ones in front there. Maybe there's a reflection, reflection into the water. Usually that wouldn't happen though if there's a lot of um, waves going on because waves break up reflections. Waves are so little waves because remember, you can only see the stuff that's like a mirror. The stuff that's behind you can't see and so there's tons of little waves. You don't get reflections as much. You just get the color of the sky and then the darks that are in the front. So it all depends on how reflective the um, water and how wavy it is okay so there's my rocks and i'll bring the rocks into this area here maybe this is rocks and just land so i'm just going to bring the land over here and there's actually a little if you look in the picture closely there is a little shack back there and you just see a little bit of the rooftop and so i'm going to do that i'm just going to put a little bit of rooftop in there just to show that there is something back there you may not have seen that but um, just anything added to add a little bit of interest to that scene i'm just going to put the little little shack back here And for all you newcomers, I do go fast. And if you feel, if you're trying to paint at the same speed as I'm painting, don't try to do that. <laughs> Just take your time. You can stop this video at any time and you can keep it going. It's, it's recording. And so you can stop the video. It's not going to be live right then. Um, you'll see me later talking, but that's okay. It's, but you'll have a time to, time to um, stop it and go do your thing and then start it up again. It'll be like it's live to you because you won't have seen it or heard it. But um, some people just like to watch it all the way through and then do it later on. That's fine. You can do it any way you'd like. And um, But just realize that these stay up there forever. So I think forever. We'll see how long. <laughs> and so we're going to put a little dark in here. And see, this is just going to... And if I want to make a green, I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue into this little bit of orange or yellows and then make a little kind of greenish in here. Little foliage here, and I'm gonna make the little chunks of the trees. You can do a bunch of them here. Now you notice I didn't do the tree chunks yet. I mean, there's still gonna be a bunch of little leaves on here and stuff, but I'm gonna show you how to do that first. But first, we're gonna do the outer edge. All right. So so far, we've got the darks here, and see the white edge. Later on, I'll tone that down a little bit. The the white edge of the rocks because they're a little bit too white now and um, they could be that light but then that be the, means usually that they're wet you know and then they get sprayed on and it, it's kind of reflecting like anything else that's reflecting the sky which is light okay hey Sonia hey Lynn uh, any more questions let me look let me see would salt work for granulation no salt is more um, like it, salt takes away the um, granules and what it does is it shows you white, white dots. Um, it it kind of looks like, like a sparkle more than like granulation. Granulation is more of the dark pigment. 
you know, and, um, and so you see the dark pigment. So I guess it's like a way of seeing salt is like a granulation, but white, you know, so you're seeing away the paper, not so much about the, um, though it does push away some of the pigment. So you, it, it's kind of this kind of like it, but not really. All right. So now for the, um, let's see any other questions I missed. Nope. Ask away guys. All right, so now we're gonna get in here with a really dark, dark for the, um, so I'm taking Prussian blue here and I'm gonna take a little bit of Cronacodum gold to make it green and I'm making it really a dark, dark green. And I'm just gonna start out making the fronds of the, of the trees and just kind of going in here. And um, I'm worried mostly about the outer edge of these trees. When it comes to the stuff inside here, I don't care about that part. It's going to be just filled in and maybe some spots you can see through. What's important is that you make the outer of these branches look good. So spend time, even if you got to draw every one of these fronds on this um, palm tree, if you got to draw every one of them in, that's fine. This is the outer edge. That's what we want to make it look really good. And, um, but on the inside here, that is so many of those fronds. There's no way you can make it look, you know, like you're going to see every one of those, but the outer edge, I want it to look very realistic. And I want to make it look like palm trees and not some other kind of tree that you just, by just dabbing it, then I definitely wanted to make it look like a palm tree and palm trees had all these little lines coming from the main branch. What I usually do is I draw a main branch like that. So I do a little main branch and then I just fill in the main branch with a bunch of these little lines and a, a rigger brush, these long rigger brushes work great for that. And so I'm just going to go in here and like I said, do the outer edge. First, the long branch that goes into the middle, long branch first, one long branch, right? And then you add the little fronds onto these, onto that branch. And now over here, where it's not that important, what is on the outer edge, I'm just gonna take my brush and then just take a lot of water and then just kind of scumble across it. Scumbling is like you're just barely touching the canvas or the paper and you're kind of dabbing it, leaving a little speck so you can see through. And see how my, I'm wiggling my hand? See how nervous I am? I'm really going all around. I'm so nervous that my hand is shaking. See, and it's like giving you a nice looking effect. So get nervous and get in there and just, you know, shake. Or drink too much coffee in the morning, <laughs> do your thing in the morning. Or drink coffee at night and then you, well, then you won't be able to sleep. So don't do that. And then you're gonna get pissed at me. It's like, he told me to drink coffee at night to get shaky. Now I can't sleep. <laughs> so your partner can get pissed at me. So don't do that. <laughs> here we go. We're good. And if you want to put coconuts on here, you just put little dark little dots in here. They can do that too. See little dots for, for coconuts. If they're, if they're coconut trees, <laughs> coconut palms. And so we're going to go in here again with some green, maybe in some orange and, and blue, make it kind of like a greenish. This orange right here has yellow in it. So that's like, it gets a little green. It's here again, I'm shaking and getting this little texture. They have all kinds of things. They have things like this ugly brush. This is a rubber band brush. You can um, poke it down like this. You can take it into the thing and just poke it down like this. Tap it in there. It gets kind of dat-like and you can do that type of thing. Um, you can take these ugly brushes. I call this ugly brush. They have things too. What you can do is you can take it and um, you can like do this type of thing where you're getting like little speck lines. But I find that to be a little bit too hard. And it's maybe for big trees, for big, huge trees. You can see I use the airbrush on this thing, but <laughs> so see how I'm just kind of using that. So this is an ugly brush. It's like a bristle brush. You can use it for that, but I kind of like to just paint them in. To me, if you're actually just painting them in with like a little rigger brush is fine enough. And then this is not like a big part of the painting where I'm going to spend a lot of time in it anyways. It's just the outer edge. In here, I'm just going to, like I said, get nervous and dot, 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 dot. Would there be a light from the um, from the sun on the palm? Yes, there would be. Um, it actually, it's kind of on this picture. It's kind of more silhouette because it's so bright that it's in more of a silhouette. But yes, you could put that. I'm going to put a little bit of let's see. Let, let's go with some light light green on the edges here. You definitely can do that. Definitely. See, I'm putting a little lights in there, and so you can put a little light in there too. Definitely. Or you just make it all silhouette. It's up to you. And also, if you're out there, um, I was talking to my class, I said, boy, it would be nice to be out there and just painting this, right? Wouldn't it be great to just sit there with your pina colada and your chair and you're just sketching away with your watercolor? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so we gotta have a, we're going to have to have a workshop somewhere where it's nice like this. Maybe Puerto Vallarta. That's always a nice place. 
and um, and then just and then whatever's there you'd paint you know you look and see what's there so um, we're kind of making this up because um, the picture if you look in the upper corner here that picture is not of sunlight actually it's well it's sunlight yes it's of course sunlight but it's not like a blue sky it's an overcast sky and I actually in Photoshop made it look really bright right in this area um, on the photograph, you see how I put light there. So I just basically did that with Photoshop because this was not light and that didn't have the sun right there. Um, I just did that just because I thought it'd make it look more interesting and more. And you actually learn a little bit more by having sparkle in there, anyways. So now let's get into our sand and um, throw some shadow in there. And actually, this is not dark enough, but I'm gonna wait till it dries and get some really, really dark darks in there. And so let's get into our sand here now. And so we're just gonna take, let's see which brush, maybe our half inch brush. I'm gonna take to dull, to make a, um, a shadow on the sand, I'm gonna take the same color, just make it a little bit darker. So what color was that? It was right here. And I did use a little lavender and that orange. And so I'm just gonna kind of throw a little bit of um, this in here to make it like shadowed, like little shadows coming across here. I know it's not, it kind of wouldn't be that way, but I'm taking liberties here. Artist license, I can say I can do whatever I want. And so, um, I mean, there'll be a shadow here, maybe this rock. And shadows and reflections are two different things. People kind of get them confused because a reflection is downwards into the water, into the into the surface, where a shadow is on top of the surface and it's, it's across the surface. So shadows and reflections, two different things. Remember, two different things. Now here, I'm gonna put a little, um, cause this beach has been walked on here, so Here's footprints, you know, the footprints walking through here. And they get bigger as they come up here and they're not perfect. You don't have to get perfect with them. Then a little bit of a reflection of shadow underneath the part of the wave right here. And maybe this didn't get dark enough in here. Maybe the wa water can be a little bit darker there. So take a little bit of this and maybe throw a little reflection because you never know how the water moves. Sometimes it's moving. And so you're getting a little bit of crevices and such like that in the water or in the sand there's little things so you can put little um, dips in there and or you keep it real clean I did a couple of paintings where I kept it really super clean where you don't see anything except for what it is and um, sometimes you want to like a bunch of ways in there so now I mean this is almost dry so since this is dry what I want to do is take this masking fluid off now so that I can show you what to do in here once it's once it's dry now, I don't have a rubber cement pickup, but I do have this um, needle rubber eraser, which you can also use for um, taking out masking fluid. And so I'm just going to rub it really slowly. And at the same time, what I can do here, let's use my finger, but I can also erase the stupid line I put in there. I shouldn't have put a line. Don't draw in your sun with a pencil. It shouldn't have a black line around it. And actually, I didn't fill in that one. Look at it, I didn't fill in that one spot, but I'll show you how you can fix that. You can just rub it in, there, in that area. And so there's the sunlight. It's gonna be right there now in here. I'm just gonna take my finger and if it's dry, it should become off super easy. You just kind of rub it back and forth. And if you have a rubber cement pickup, that works really well too. So I'm just gonna go in here and just get these. See, the thing is I didn't paint over this enough and so that you're not getting dots, you're getting white, but that's okay because I'd rather just make sure I keep it white. I was just really worried about not keeping it white. A couple dots here. And then I can, I can always put things dark again into there. There we go. And so now we have the nice shiny light, you know, that's coming down from the sun. And let me just show you here. I'm gonna take my small little brush. Oh, I haven't toasted you guys in a while. Toast guys, cheers, cheers, cheers for another Thursday, great Thursday night. Uh, this is the number nine, actually nine or 10 um, pink brush beer. Ah. Very good, from Belgium, not bad. All right, so <laughs> to get back. So what I'm gonna do here, how much time do we have? Oh, 7.19, we still got 10 minutes. So we're gonna go here, I'm gonna wet this right here, right around the sun, and I'm gonna get rid of these hard edges. There's a little bit of a hard edge right there. And so I'm just gonna wet it real lightly, just slightly wet it, get my, um, get it to go away. The nice thing about this paper, this um, Stonehenge Aqua, it lifts up really simple. And there you have it, it just went away. Now I, I just use the water and just kind of brush it away there. No big deal. Now down here, what I can do is I can start painting, negative painting the dots or just dry brush it here too, a little bit more. Dry brush a little bit here. Keep it nice and light. 
Now, right behind the rock is going to be a shadow and a reflection. You can, you know, you can have that. Isn't that amazing? You can have a shadow and a reflection. The reflection goes into the water. The shadow goes away on top of the water. But more importantly will be the, the shadow or the reflection going down from there. Because if, if the water's not churned and if it's kind of laying pretty nice and even, then you're not going to get the waves. And if you don't have much many waves, then you're going to see through the water and it's going to be flat. <laughs> no, I had a beer. <laughs> uh, thanks, Pamela, for reminding me. Yeah, no, I had a beer I, in the very beginning. I just didn't go into it. Triple F from Belgium. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so let's see what else we got here. Well, let's see. Um, so now, now we're going to just take a um, race of pencil lines where I didn't do the water or inside the fluff of the um, wave. I'm just going to erase that really quickly. So I don't have any pencil lines because there shouldn't be lines in your water. And so you just erase them right through the water color. And you just, that's one thing people don't understand. You can, if you put them on really light, you can erase the, see how I'm just erasing the pencil lines? You can erase it right through the water color. It comes out right through there. Because the, the, the pigment is transparent and so you're just picking up the um, graphite. I mean, you'll get a little bit of a line, but you can take away most of it. Now I'm going to go in here and just take my light blue and just kind of dot it a little bit and dry brush it so it looks speckled you know a little speckled like little lines you can also put waves in here and what are the waves they're just little they're like pointy little you know um, lines see and i don't know if you can see let me show you this close up do some lines so that right here there's still going to be waves in here there's gonna be like waves coming down and so there's it's coming down and so there's gonna be a top side and there's gonna be a side that's away from you and that dark side looks like a way. It comes away, so you can get a little bit of a line there. Again, there's like three different, um, there's the dark, the light, the white, the dark, and the middle tones. And the middle tone is kind of like the light part of the shadow, you know, of the water. Because you have the white, which is of course the light that's hidden. And it's also because the, the, the water is churned up, so you're gonna get that white. And so I'm just gonna put little, little lines in here little waves because there are going to be waves here little waves yeah there's little waves and then and that's not dark enough up here see how it's not dark enough it got it got 20 percent lighter remember i said things get 20 percent lighter so if it looks right while it's wet it's wrong so i put a little bit darker up in there and i can actually make lines so there's gonna be some little lighter parts too because even in, in a wave there's waves inside waves because it's not like it's a smooth smooth surface it's also a wave in there. So there's waves coming from this way, that way, and it's just all kinds of lines in there. And there is like, like bricks, when you put bricks on a building, like bricks, you gotta put a lot of them in and you gotta identify the shape. You don't have to put them all in a lot of times, but enough till you can see what the pattern is in, in the water or on a brick wall. It's all kind of the same type of thing. And then um, here we're gonna go with reflections from the rock into the water now. And so that's gonna be just it gets a little bit lighter as it goes away and so I'm going to keep the, the reflections because when when sand is wet it, it acts like like you're doing a lake basically it's not like it depends on how much waves you have in it if you don't have many waves of course you're not going to get little waves but you will get long um gradual waves and then blue and the color is not that important to pick out a certain color for a wave or water. It's whatever you use in the sky, just use it in the water. It'll, it'll match, it'll be fine. And so the only thing left I have to do is take this white and they're too vibrant, they're too um, stark white. And so what I'm gonna do is um, on the one side away from the sun, that will be a little bit, a little bit darker. And so actually I'm gonna use a purple, like a gray, cause it's white, right? And so. I'm just gonna put a little bit, not as dark as the dark in here, but just a little bit. See, it's just the dark side of the wave. And you can make it patterned or textured so that it looks more fluffy. I'm not sure if fluffy is the word, um, a good word, but it's scumbled, fluffy, um, patterned. Any questions? Uh, I don't see, um, where can I see the painting people did? Uh, the people post them on my Facebook um, group page. I have a group page called, um, and actually, if you go on my website, on the bottom where we do the paint alongs, this week I put a link 
to the Facebook group and you can sign up for that group and people have been posting their their paintings on that site and um, and also if they need help if you need help with your painting um, put them up there and I, I give advice and sometimes I take them into Photoshop and show you advice um, so it's, it's a fun thing so just um, go into there sign up sign up for that and also while you're here in, on YouTube please subscribe it'll help me out a little bit uh, it's um, it'll help me a little bit and so here we go to keep these free these still are free I haven't charged anything for these these are awesome thank you also for all the people that donate um, and buy my, my, my daily paintings I do a daily painting and sometimes these are go up for sale these these paintings I do and so here we go I'm gonna, I'm gonna darken these little lights I said in here before remember I said I was gonna darken those a little bit and so I did that and I can put the little lines through here because the dark lines can still go through it's it's kind of there's gonna be a dark line of the of the reflection of the um of the water of the wave because there are some dark parts <laughs> Tina, you just said that when i did it right at the top of the rocks <laughs> good job i'm always looking for <laughs> i i caught you to it I, I beat you to it this time i i think maybe maybe i didn't i didn't look up i just remember i had to do that I don't think there's anything else. I am gonna spec. I'm gonna spatter a little bit here. I think it's not enough um, texture. I didn't get enough texture. I don't think. And so here I'm gonna put a little bit bluer for the water. So nice BC. I mean, you can put people. And uh, the thing is, if you put people, they'd have to be in this area. And I think it overweighed too much. Maybe on this side. Um, but I think yeah, you could put them right here because this is my center of interest. Oh, I said I was gonna put darker in here. That's what I did. Tina, you forgot to tell me that. Darker in the, into the into the, um, into the trees here. I just want to get a few little darker spots on the inside here, just to get it nice and contrasty over here a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, it actually looks pretty good already. I thought just a few. Tone it down a little bit and. A little bit of orange maybe inside there because you know me i don't like to just keep it one maybe little little dots of um, soft edges here maybe a few little plants here that are lighter all right and a little spatter and we're done right is it almost that time oh my gosh look at that time unbelievable how fast time flies when i'm doing these things I'm kind of amazed that I get it down done in time for the exact time. All right, so we're going to spatter across here to get a little bit more texture. I'm just hitting against my. Don't put it in the water so much because that would be flat. That wouldn't be textured in the in the water. Be more here in the sand. And scumble it a little bit. Scumble. See, I, I don't know if you can see that texture there a little bit. See, I, I just spattered and it gives you a little bit of texture right there. All right, so let's take the tape off, and we're got another another nice set, um, Thursday. <laughs> Boy, get my days mixed up here. And so next week we're gonna maybe try a still life. Um, we're gonna see what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna always we always I always try to surprise you with what we're doing. This week I want to do the wave because I told you I was gonna be doing wave sooner or later, and I did on my Thursday. If you're not signed up, or all you newcomers, if you're not signed up for my newsletter. Um, that's where I tell you what we're going to be painting, and I give you a little um, advice on here and there. And this week it was about about doing waves, and so it was all about how I photograph, not photograph, but how I um, light up waves. And so there we have this one from now, and let's see how this one turned out from this afternoon compared. This one's a little bit more worked at. This one's fresher. This one's a little bit more work that as you can see i went into the water a little bit too much um this one's a lot fresher because i go in get it done this one i was really you can see close up it's a really a little bit worked at see that's a little bit more not as fresh this one's a little bit fresher because it's put down and left the more you can leave things alone just leave them alone the better they'll look all right so last question guys and then we gotta go <laughs> tina's slipping hey mora <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i think that's about it so if you have any more oh let me, i wanted to show you one more thing with the airbrush really quickly and i know we got only one minute left but um with the airbrush i could take and um i can like dull an area or let's say i want to make this a little bit bluer i could put it into my airbrush 
and then just spray over it re really lightly. Or you can even put just water in there sometimes to put it in. And um, so maybe next week I'll actually use it part of the painting, but just to let you know that there is something like this available now. And um, if you want to watch my video on that, um, go to my website and look at my, well, actually find my newsletter. <laughs> and actually, if you go to my website, there's an um, archive of my newsletter uh, on the part where you sign up. There's an archive and you can look for my, um, or on my YouTube channel, I have my, um, how to use a, a, a what do you call these? Airbrush. All right. All right. So until next week, let me just look at you guys for a second. <laughs> so we're all good, right, guys? And so again, thanks for coming by on Thursday. And please post these again. And again, uh, great job on last week's. I'm gonna definitely want to see what you guys did this week, this week with the water and waves. And show me. Show me at the group site on Facebook. And like, if you need to get there, go to my website. I do have a link on my website right now that you can see. You can sign up for my um, and being a member there and being joining our group. All right. So until next Thursday, it's going to be something cutesy, I think. And so we're going to have fun next week, next Thursday. All right. So until next Thursday, we'll see you guys later. Bye bye.